Hey, what's up? Welcome and thank you for checking out this video. So the little mermaid. I really wanted to like this film. Red Soon, she tried to warn me, but I didn't listen. I tried to stay as clear minded as I could. I didn't listen to all the YouTube hate and all the backlash that the movie was going through. Plus, I never saw the original, so there was always that chance, right, that maybe it'd be good enough to see it on a standalone. But, you know, I, I did have my doubts, of course, just from watching the trailer and seeing the very obvious or, excuse me, the very subtle change that Disney made on Ariel. And I don't know. I mean, I don't know if I see a difference between the two. Do you? Hey, at least they're both mermaids, right? Or are they? I don't even know anymore. Anyway, I'm not going to trash the film. But I do want to be honest. And I do want to see if I can shine a little bit of a different light on what's happening. Now, I do enjoy animations a lot. Puss in Boots is my favorite film of 2022 by a long shot. We watched it maybe four times, at least three times, maybe four times last year. Now, we don't have kids, but I do have a new nephew, and he's growing up pretty fast. And I would love to see the day where I can actually add him to our AMC A-list entourage, and we can become three. And I would love to have him come around with us and watch movies, share our popcorn, and have a good time. I look forward to that day, so that's why this is important for me to speak about. So let's talk about it. Now, to be clear, no, I did not enjoy the film much. I actually fell asleep like three times, and that's very rare for me. There is a lot of hate. There is a lot of calls for the flopped and, you know, they hate it and stuff. And again, if I show you like some of the headlines when you look up for reviews, right, most of them are going to be horrible. Finishing under 500 million and they seem to be enjoying it. I really like the thumbnail, though, the original one calling for the flop. Um, very fishy because reviews are being faked, apparently. Little Mermaid Star Meltdown. His face doesn't look so happy with the review. Let's talk about it. It's it's as bad as you think. I mean, that's kind of harsh. You know, his face and, watch, and watching it, this is bad. There are so many, right? You get, you get the point. Absolute bilge. This is the worst. What went wrong? Disney panics. How uh, does it ever end, right? It, there is so much bombardment. And... It's justifiable. I don't think it was that bad, but you know, I can see why this is this is happening. So let me show you. Let me show you this though, because as much as there are so many that hate it, I want to show you one that likes it, right? No problem. Hey guys, what movie did you just see? The Little Mermaid. The Little Mermaid. Okay, how'd you guys like it? It was a ten out of ten. Best ten movie out of ten. Of the year. You agree? Yeah, it was really good. So would you give it a favorite part, like maybe a favorite part in the movie, say favorite, favorite song? Part of your world, because you know it eats. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Okay, so these kids look very happy, healthy. They had a good time, smiling. They got their uh, popcorn and drink, and they have the posters. Why not, right? It really is about them anyway. So this is why I don't want to be like complete hatred type of review. Because I'm keeping them in mind. I can tell you, for example, that when we were watching it, we had a full theater. It was so full that we had to sit way in the back in the handicap section. And when the movie was over, there was a standing ovation. Not a not a really loud one and not a weak one either. It was like a, a pretty good clapping and cheering. And during the whole film, there were a lot of children who were laughing out loud. And genuine laughs too, like something that happens on the movie. So how can I sit here and criticize and say, like, you know, yeah, it's horrible, this and that, when, you know, a lot of people did enjoy it, right? It's just because I personally didn't like it. I don't think it's like a complete failure. I mean, they're trying something here, but I am going to speak about that. In a way, it also it does worry me because it really feels lately, not lately, it's been a while, that Disney has been trying to push something on us. And it's getting to the point where it's, is it dangerous? I don't know. I don't want to use the words grooming or brainwashing our, our young kids and young people. But it really feels that way. 
if you look back to the latest releases, for example, I mean, they have Buzz Lightyear, which went through controversy. They have The Strange World, which is absolutely horrible and probably the only other film that I fell asleep three times. Now they have The Little Mermaid. And coming up is Elemental, which I don't foresee it being much different. It's probably going to have some backlash, at least from what I've seen on the trailer. I'm still on the fence whether we're going to go see it or not, but very, very iffy. Not to mention everything they did to Star Wars and MCU. Don't get me started on that. But it's pretty obvious that they're pushing something, and we know what it is. When you compare it to films from DreamWorks, for example, like The Bad Guys was a great movie, in case you haven't seen it. That was a great animated film. You know, they had the Minions, of course, Puss in Boots that I said, and, you know, Mario, of course. So can we ask, is, is Disney dying? Um, it's a fair question, right? I mean, they're getting outdone by smaller companies with much lesser budgets. Now, I grew up with Looney Tunes, so I didn't get a chance to watch many Disney movies, but I do know they have so many classics. People grew up with them. They love them. They remember them. And it's a generational thing, right? This includes The Little Mermaid. So then what gives, right? I mean, why, why make a remake of a classic? Is there ever a time when a company has made a remake of any movie and it's worked out? Couldn't think of one. I looked, I thought about it, I even slept on it. I said, there's got to be at least one or two, something. Somebody made a good remake. Can't think of one. So if you're still watching this and you have one in thought, let me know. I would love to see if there's actually a, one example where this works out. I don't think it ever will, because when movies become classics, they do so because people love them the way they are. So by that logic, nothing will ever be better than the original. People liked it. They make it an icon, and they don't want to mess with it. They liked it the way it was. So why make a remake? I'll never understand. So let me talk a little bit about the movie and what happened and why maybe I'm so, I disliked it so much. But let me tell you, like, I don't fully blame Disney. Ultimately, it is their decision to do what they do. Yes. So it is their fault. But I believe there's bigger actors and bigger evil entities that are controlling what we're watching. Um, about the movie, I mean, look, Disney was already under heavy fire because of the decision to change Ariel's look in a big way. So now I went to see it first time, first time watching The Mermaid. So I try to be as neutral as I can, turn the other way. It doesn't matter to me. Show me if you have a good movie. Well, how can I do that even when I know things are in the back burner? But then the first scene that you show me is the sisters and Triton, right? Now, this is how the original sisters look. Now that I had to do a little research, of course, it makes sense. Triton is a white mermaid or merman. That's how his daughters look. So how do we start? We start with this, excuse the quality here, but I don't know what I'm supposed to think, right? You still see seeing a very dark girl. Um, I don't even know if we had a Latina, but uh, hey, wait a minute. Did we? Because we have Indian, we have white, blonde, um, Asian, of course. This is not the way the movie should start. I don't know what to think here. I know, I know I'm thinking as an adult, so I am wondering like, who are their mothers and why do they all look different? How do they reproduce? Is he like spraying himself on eggs somewhere? Who knows? But it's just not, it's not the way to start a film. I'm already questioning so much of what are you trying to tell me here? I don't know if I'm going to like this guy. Is he going around messing around? I don't know. Those things shouldn't be there. Then you got Ariel, of course, she's the one missing and she's the one misbehaving. And That's another thing that Disney's been trying to push too much in all the last films that I've seen from them. It seems like they want to reward not listening to your parents. You know what I mean? It's like you succeed, you become adventurous, very fun, you'll be the hero, you'll be rewarded if you do the opposite of what your parents ask you to do. Don't like that message, no. I mean, he's trying to be protective, of course, maybe a little overprotective. Who knows? The movie just started. And I just don't like that message. They've been doing it way too much where they are rewarding behavior of disobeying your parents. And it shouldn't be that way. It very much seems like they're trying to push that. 
don't listen to your parents, listen to us. So is there a lot to that? Am I overthinking it? I don't know, but that's what I see. So I'm not going to talk about the rest of the movie. I mean, all of the movie, because there's plenty of reviews out there. So I'll move on to the end. And the end is always, always going to be the most important thing in a movie, right? Makes sense. It can make a bad movie look good. It can make a good movie look great. Or it can make a bad movie just be a complete dumpster fire. So I didn't understand as I was watching, like, wait. So Ariel kills the witch or Ursula, right? In by by that act, and she's pretty much everything. I, I avoid everything that I've been watching for the past two hours. Like, why is the purpose of the prince there? Why she even wanted to be with humans and stuff? She had to save herself anyway. And somehow that became the reason why her father decided to unite with the humans finally and accept them as equals. It doesn't make sense. So naturally, I went to look for the uh, what happened on the real um, story. And that makes a lot more sense. It was the prince who apparently killed Ursula. And with that, it was considered him risking his life to save uh, Triton's daughter. And why not, right? Okay, let me give humans a chance. Maybe they're not so bad. Blah, blah, blah. Hey, hooray. That's how the movie should have ended. And that's how humans and mer mermaids and mermen become friends. Not by what they showed us in this movie. And then they showed us a horrible ending CGI again with all those weird faces and bodies of mer, mer people. Different colors, different races. I don't even know. I don't even know. It just didn't have a good taste or a good natural feel to the whole thing. Now, let me pause this and let me show you like why I think that, why is this going on, right? This is something I talked about before, and I want to talk about this a lot, but I need to hope that I grow my subscriptions for anybody to listen to. It's too small right now to actually go into, into this. This is kind of heavy, but let me keep it as simple as possible. You've probably heard of ESG and ESG investing. This is what's running our world right now, right? It's the big, huge money. The big money, the real money. Let me show you here. When you see names like Vanguard and Wealthfront, Merrill Lynch. ESG investors are also increasingly informing the investment choices of large institutional investors, such as public pension funds. This is the banks are also included on this. According to the industry report, investors held $17.1 trillion in assets chosen according to ESG principles. That's up from 12 trillion two years ago. So that's about 5.1 trillion in two years. And you can see how it's increasing. That's real money. So that's what's making the decisions for Disney because, let me see here, where's my stock? I'm not very well organized, but okay. Because Disney stock is owned by the creators of the ESG. The Vanguard Group, BlackRock, State Street, all these banks, Morgan, State Farm. And here are the pension funds they're talking about. Of course, there's more Vanguard, Vanguard, Fidelity, blah, blah, blah. Look at the amount of money they have on there, the amount of shares, the 13 billion, 11 billion, 6 billion. They own Disney, so they get to call the shots. This is why when people or YouTubers call for, you know, boycotts and they're waving and punching the air, saying, Disney, you're not going to get a single dollar from me, and Hollywood, I'm done with you, no more money, blah, blah, blah. This is why it doesn't work, right? If you try to think about it, like, you know, fans have been complaining for a long time, and they have all that data. They know that what they're doing is making fans angry, but they don't care, right? They don't care because the real money is the one that speaks louder. This is the ESG part. The social part is what affects the film. This is the only part I'm going to read because you got to consider this is a lot bigger than just film. We're only talking about films here, but this controls everything, everything else. This is something that we need to look into. Uh, investors see companies that promote ethical and social con conscious themes, including diversity, inclusion, community focus, social justice, corporate ethics, in addition to fighting against racial, gender, and sexual discrimination. I mean, they get to say a lot of these words. We can't even say these words out loud. 
Now, when you read that, you kind of think, well, it seems to me like they're actually trying to do the right thing, have everybody equal and blah, 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 blah. But you know, when they're trying to sell you P, they're not going to tell you it's just P, right? They're going to tell you it's the best drink. You're going to have all this energy. You're going to be able to lift heavier. You're going to be able to have more babies. I don't know. It'll make you better, but they're not going to tell you what it actually is. They're going to sell you something. And that's what they're doing with this, because this is really all about having full control of what we watch and how we behave. That's what they're putting their money at. This is why we need to look into this, talk about it, and keep it in mind that this is what's going on with our films lately. If you want more proof, Academy Awards announced dramatic new inclusion requirements for Best Picture and Oscar contenders. Kind of funny that this happened in 2020, right before the you-know-what when all film was stopped and whatnot. And then they passed these things. Uh, In the terms of on-screen representation, films must have at least one of the lead actors or a significant supporting actor represent an under, underrepresented racial group with at least 30% of all actors in minor roles from underrepresented groups. That sounds like the inclusion for the sake of inclusion, right? This is why some of our films have been sucking so much lately. This is why we see six mermaids of all different races just for the sake of having it there. It doesn't look good. It doesn't feel right. It's very, I don't know if the word offensive, but that's how it feels to me. I mean, I don't know. As a way to push more diversity and inclusion behind the cameras, creative leadership on films is encouraged to be made up of women, underrepresented racial and ethnic group, a part of LGBTQT community and people with disabilities. 30% of the film's crew is encouraged to be made up of underrepresented communities as well. A new focus on including women, underrepresented racial or ethnic group, LGBTQTS, and people with disabilities in paid apprenticeships and internships will also make a film quality of the best picture category. Okay? So you can see that there is a pressure on them. So how can you have creativity? How can you have open mind is if you're wanting to include for the sake of inclusion, right? You can have a best idea for a film, but now you got to fill it up with people that you weren't qualified or they weren't the people you were looking for. That's why we're seeing so many movies with so much like, not weird pairs, but they're just not matching. They just feel like, you know, they're just there for the sake of being there and they don't have chemistry. And I don't really like what I'm seeing lately with a lot of the films, but you know, that's why it happens. This uh, I wanted to address because uh, some of the criticism that was going on is how bad Little Mermaid is doing overseas, which is very true. You can see 145 domestic, that's us, 78 only internationally. And you might think that doesn't sound bad, right? It's doing pretty good compared to Fast X. It's only doing 119 domestic and 405 international. This shows that pretty much the rest of the world doesn't agree with what's going on. They don't even want to watch it. They're not interested. Um, that's what I wanted to point out as far as like what is going on with uh, the films. I don't like it. I hope that Disney fixes it. I'm not looking forward necessarily to Elemental, and I'm really hoping that the Marvels is the rock bottom. All right, so that's it.